Greetings friends, my name is John Gabriel and this is the New Calculus channel. So in this video I'm going to be showing you a demonstration of my historic identity uh, which comes from the Geometric Theorem of January 2020 and I'll show you how it solves both the tangent line problem and also the definite integral uh, in what you see summarized in front of you. So let's begin. Now, let's start off with a simpler function. Let's say we want the function uh, x, say for example. Okay? And so that's x. And now, if we want to see what the derivative is, or really the slope, because a straight line always has a slope, and we only call it a derivative when it's tangent to another nonlinear curve, because a straight line can't be tangent to itself. That's just nonsense that the idiotic mainstream academics of the last few decades have been teaching. And that's why so many students are confused, because they cannot understand tangency. And of course, uh, they've gone even further in their monkey business by uh, changing the definition of tangency so that it's now even worse than it was. It's circular and it's problematic and very flawed. So in any case, so if this, this is the, the, uh, the identity, okay? This is the identity. It says the secant line slope is equal to the slope plus the difference. Now, if it's a straight line, there is no difference, right? So all we have is just the slope, okay? which is 1 at the point of 2, when x is 2, the slope is 1, okay? And there is no difference, because h doesn't really play a role. You can have any h you like, and it will still give you the correct answer. So now, the derivative of this will happen to be 1, okay? It will happen to be 1. So let's just make that 1. And we want it to be from, let's see, from x is equal to 2 and h3, right? So uh, we'll leave, we'll make that 2, and we'll say it goes all the way up to 5, and we'll readjust these axes so we can see what's happening. Okay? Now... <clears throat> You'll notice that uh, we can uh, refresh the sums, and in terms of the same identity, this same identity here, we have that this area here is equal to three units. And of course, it's very neatly broken down into uh, those rectangular pieces from the derivative and the irregular pieces from the difference. Okay, so what I'm showing you here, I'll also give you a link to these applets and you'll be able to study them. So once again, this is what you have. And if n is equal to 1, then this will correspond exactly to this uh, statement here because this here is dealing only with uh, one particular interval, okay, not more than one interval. But it doesn't really matter because as many intervals as you have won't affect the calculation of the area. So I've just shown you uh, a straight line, and now I'm going to show you a quadratic. So let's do a quadratic like that. And I'm going to bring this down a bit now with the axis so that you can see what's going on, like that. Okay, and <clears throat> we can see that <clears throat> if it's if x is at two, and let's bring this down a little bit more. If h is say two, like that, just so that we don't have to be all over the show, then we'll see that the derivative is four. Okay, and the same identity here will be used in the de definition of the definite integral. So now we go to the definite integral and type in two x here. Okay, like so. And let's uh, make this smaller now. Put the axis in. And uh, where are the axes? <laughs> Good question. Okay, 
and then try and just reduce this a little bit like so and like so <clears throat> okay and I think we're good now and so we want to find the area between 2 and did we say 2 and 4 right because you made H2 so that will be between 2 and 4 and we know that it's going to be 12 and we can refresh the sums here and we'll see that it's also 12 now notice this is done in terms of the intervals so if I have more intervals these values here will obviously change okay but the ultimate uh, area stays the same okay so this area here is the green area and the orange area are these little irregular uh, they look like triangles and in this case they are because 2x is a straight line but they don't have to be triangles all right so if we bring it down like that to about one uh, then we'll see that we have exactly the same values when n is equal to 1 to the calculation on the left here because I'm only dealing with one partition here, all right? So I've shown you now for a straight line and a quadratic. And shall we do another function? Well, how about a logarithm? So let's do log of x, okay? Because it works, it works with everything, actually. The geometric theorem, you only need to prove once and you have the result forever, right? So we know that we'll have a derivative of a half here because we're looking at x is equal to 2. And let's just be a little um, adventurous and make that 3, like so. And so we're going to now see what this looks like. For the definite integral, or what do we have here? We had from 2 to 5, right? So we're going to go from 2 to 5 like that. And of course, we know the derivative, and we can also get it from that identity. We know that uh, from the identity, this identity here on the left, that the derivative is 1 over x, yes. Okay, so it's, it looks like this. And let's just bring it up like that. We'll refresh here, and so we'll see that ultimately the total area is 0.916, which corresponds with this because n is equal to 1. And if we move it across like that, and it's obviously not showing this right because I've used, uh, because the show area function doesn't work that great, but if I do this, if I do the negative 1 like this, it will work. Well, maybe not. <laughs> okay, but in any case, that doesn't affect the fact that the orange areas, so the shading is not correct, but that's not a problem. Um, the calculations are correct. So you have that the total area is 0.916 under the curve. This should actually be under the blue curve. But, of course, the health function even says the theorem will work for every function. But I haven't been able to get the applet to shade correctly for all functions and you can fix it in the show area button script I just haven't got around to it but my purpose is to show you that it works for all function and it does because the calculations are the same okay so shall we do one more then uh, how about a trigonometric function how about sine of x okay and let's just bring this up a little bit like that and let's bring this down to 1, if we can. Um, let's see here. So this here would be 1 like this. Let's put the grid in so we can see what we're doing. Grid, and we want x to be at 1, more or less at 1. Okay. Can't get it exactly. Okay, but there you go. Uh, let's put it at zero. That's probably easier. How about we put it at zero? And then, of course, this will give you the same results as your mainstream calculus because it's based on that flawed Newtonian uh, non-parallel secant approximation. And as you'll see, <coughs> the tangent line there is one, and we're doing it from zero to three. So... 
come over here and we know this is cos of x. So we'll say cos of x like that. And refresh here and we'll make it from 0, zero to 3 like so. Okay. And the calculations agree. 0 0.141 would be the area because we're taking both areas but if we had to do it between just uh, with positive areas like 1.5 then it's positive right okay it's positive so let's go back here and also show you here between 1.5 uh, that would mean h would have to be 1.5 there you go and so in this case here the der derivative is 1 and <clears throat> over here well, it's approximately one. Well, that's that's the rectangular area under the curve. But here it's not showing it correctly again because I haven't modified so that it does it. But the areas are correct. And so as you can see, this identity works for all functions. It doesn't matter which particular function you're using because the geometry is true for any smooth function. I hope you've enjoyed this little presentation and that you'll study the links and download the applets which I'll place in the detail section. My name is John Gabriel. This is the New Calculus Channel. Till next time, goodbye.